Hey guys, Crystal here at Crystal's Crafties. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add some shadow in Canva. Canva actually has um, a really powerful shadow tool. It lets you do a lot of different things and you can create a lot of different looks with these different shadow effects. So let's just jump right in and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am. I have used five of the different shadow effects that Canva has. Um, they actually have six, um, but I did not use the outline shadow. So this one here is gonna be the most um, comprehensive shadow. It's called the drop shadow. This one here is an angle shadow. This is a curve shadow. This is a um, lift shadow, and this one is a backdrop shadow. So you can see they are all slightly different. Um, this one here is angled. So the flower angles, it takes the shadow and just shifts them a little bit. This one um, just kind of curves everything. It's, it's really similar to the angle and it can also be done in the drop shadow, but it's got its own functionality. Um, the lift just, like it says, lifts it off the page. And then the backdrop is the one where you can change this elevation. So you can see the shadow is dropped back behind the flower. So it makes it look like the flower is standing up instead of laying down. So let's go over each one of these. I'll show you how to use them. And you can see the different effects that they have. So I have the same flower right here. And the first one we're gonna do is the drop shadow. Like I said, it's the most comprehensive. It's gonna handle almost everything that you wanna do and it has the most functionality. So to do that, you wanna select your object that you have. And I just got this flower from the Canva elements. Um, I went over here into elements and I typed in pink flower and I came to photos cause you want something that's realistic. And all of these pink flowers popped up. I picked one and that's what I went with. Okay, to get the shadow, you wanna to come to edit image, and edit image is only going to be available to you if you have your image selected. So make sure you select it, then click edit image, and you'll come here to shadows. If you don't see shadows, just type shadows up here in this search and it'll bring it up for you. Okay, so shadows, and you can see all the ones I talked about. Glow is the one I did not use. It just puts a shadow around the whole thing. Drop, angle, curve, page lift, backdrop. Let's start with drop. So I'm going to select it and it automatically put the shadow in behind it. But I wanna edit that. That's not exactly what I want. So if I click the little menu in here, you see I get a lot of options. Now this right here, it's going to default to bottom right. That means the shadow is at the right side towards the bottom. Let's see all the different things. We can do the top. So now it's coming in. This is your light source. This is where is your light gonna come from? So it's coming in from the top. Top right, you see it moved over here. Right, now it's just on the right side. Bottom right, it's on the bottom right side. Bottom. So now we're just down here, bottom left, left, and top left. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this um, top right. Actually, let me do bottom right. Okay, so here I have the shadow at the bottom right. Now what is all of this other stuff? Offset, this is how far out your shadow is going to go. If you want it to go really far out, you'll drag the offset to a higher number. I'm gonna leave this one at two. Angle, now this can be done in one of the other functions as well. It's your preference. I like to leave it at zero, but what it does is literally shifts your shadow so that it is not at the same angle as your object. So do you see the shadow rotating around the object? When I'm working on a drop shadow, I like to leave it at zero. Okay, transparency. That is how dark or light this shadow is going to be. If I bring up the transparency, it gets a lot darker. I don't even think that looks like a shadow anymore. 
bring down the transparency and it gets really, really light. I like to bring down the transparency. Okay, and blur. That is how spread out it's going to be. So do you see the difference here? I also like to up the blur. I think bringing down the transparency and upping the blur makes it look a little more realistic. Now that I've got my blur and transparency, I think I might want that shadow to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pull the offset up. Okay. So this was the drop set or drop shadow. When you've got it the way you want it, hit apply and it will save in what you've done. All right, let's do another one. So let's move on to angle. Now this one, its main function, same thing, you select it and then you're gonna click into your little menu. Its main function is to rotate the shadow around the object. So you can change its angle. So as we move this slider up and down, you can see the shadow rotating around the flower. So I'm gonna put it up to four. Transparency and blur do the exact same thing. We're gonna make that a darker shadow or a lighter shadow. And blur just spreads it out or makes it condensed. So that is how the um, angle is going to work. I'm not going to hit apply on that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. I've got this one selected. I'm going to hit edit image, get my shadows. Let's do curved. So I've selected curved and it automatically puts a shadow in for me. Now I select my menu and I can get my options again. Again, this is going to move the position of the shadow. This is really more meant for a straight object like a piece of paper. If you want it to look curved, this tool will come in handy. The offset, how far up or down your shadow is going to go. Transparency, same thing that it always does, lighter or darker, and blur, the same thing, higher intensity, lower intensity. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, edit image, shadows, page lift. So this one just gives it a little lift. It's really similar to the drop shadow. Um, it works a lot, a lot the same, it has a lot of the same functions. It just doesn't let you pick where it's coming. You can't pick like top right, bottom left. But other than that, you're gonna have the same functionalities here with the option of a curve. So you can move it around this way. Okay, and let's go look at the last one. This one is where we are going to do the backdrop. Okay, so it automatically puts in the shadow like it does with every other tool. So I've clicked into the menu. Now here's where your angles come in. This is where you can change. If I do the vertical, do you see that shadow dropping? That's making my flower stand up. This is making my flower lay down. Standing up and laying down. I'm going to stand it back up. And now the other, the horizontal angle is going to shift it from left to right. So you can decide which way you want your light coming in on the flower as well. And transparency and blur do the exact same things. This one I wanted to show you when I used the backdrop angle or backdrop shadow as opposed to the drop shadow. Right here, this frame is laying flat. Right here, the frame is standing up because of the different type of shadow that I've used. Okay, so that really is all there is to it. The shadows are fun. Um, if you are trying to work on those 3D designs for like the tumblers and stuff, you can do that here in Canva. It takes a little bit of work, um, but these tools will get you there. All right, guys, that's all I have. We'll see you next time.